Hey guys, welcome back to L&D Home. In today's video, we are going to be tackling our pantry. We're going to be giving it a little bit of a makeover. Here is what our pantry currently looks like. And while the organization is going to stay pretty much the same, I absolutely hate the wire shelves. I hate that little shelf there at the top. And it just doesn't look very appealing. I've been wanting to redo this pantry for quite a while, but it was just not in the budget. But I found a way to do it on a dime that hopefully will last a decent amount of time until we can afford to do what we would really like to do in this pantry. First things first, I have to empty everything out. I have to get all of the food, all of the stuff out. And when I did this, one tip if you're doing a project like this and you wanna keep things rem remotely, oh my gosh, I can't talk today, in the same spot, um, is to make piles. So I took everything into different areas of the rest of the house and I put all of those items together like in a pile or a section. That way I didn't have to go through everything when I put it back in the pantry since I pretty much wanted the setup to be the same. I then worked on trying to get the shelves out and I was only able to get one shelf out which was a little bit disappointing because it would have been easier to work inside of the pantry without the shelves there. But as I was trying to use a rubber mallet to get the shelves out, I just noticed that like the brackets and things were like moving around a little bit too much and I was just a little bit nervous. So I decided to stop with the shelf process and just take the brackets off um, because I'm going to be replacing those. Excuse me, I had to stop and help my daughter with her summer work. <laughs> so while we empty this out, I will let you hang out and just watch. Why you wanna let me go not nah, now? Are you saying that you change your mind? For love or pity, let me know not nah, now. Cause your love made me, made me go blind. What am I hearing? Saying you're moving back When were you gonna tell David is so silly he wanted to smile and say hi to the camera as he is walking past. We were having a conversation about this small shelf because I really hate it. Um, and we were trying to figure out if we wanted to take it out or leave it. So I first started by taking the brackets off to see if I could leave the shelf, but it didn't work. So I decided the whole shelf had to come down. I didn't like it. It wasn't functioning for us, so I just decided to take it out completely. What am I hearing? It feels like a heart attack. Someone help me catch my breath again. How did you stop loving me? How is that even possible? Possible. When I'm doing any kind of home project that makes a mess, I like to clean as I go. I needed to sweep the bottom of this out because I'm going to be painting in here anyway, but just another tip when you're doing a home project, just straighten things up as you go while you can. That way when you get towards the end of the project, you're not left with putting everything back, but also a huge giant mess. After that, I knew that I was going to be painting this door, so I went ahead and took off this organizer. This has really come in handy for us because there's just not a lot of room in this pantry. Eventually, we want to add some like extra shelves and do things a little bit differently, but for now, we just had to work with what we had to work with. I took some spackle, and mine is a little old, so I had to mix some water in there, which helped, but it was kind of a pain to work with. But I wanted to spackle as many of the holes as possible. Now, I didn't get this completely perfect, but I tried to do my very best to get any of the holes that I was not going to be hanging something back into. How could we let love go? How could we While I was waiting on the speckle to dry, I went ahead and started working on the shelf covers that I'm going to be making. I did a previous video where I worked on our hall closet where our linens and everything goes, and I wanted to try that same idea again, but a little bit different. Now, originally, I did want to make wood shelf covers, but the price of wood, even like 
particle board plywood, like the bottom of the barrel stuff, um, was way more expensive. It actually has gone up since like two months ago when I checked. And I was like, what in the world? That's crazy. So I got some foam board from Dollar Tree. Um, now this is 30 inches long, which was about what I needed to go across my shelf. I do wish they were a little bit longer, maybe just about three-fourths of an inch or so, so it covered um, the ends a little bit more, but it is what it is, and I'm happy with the result. But I'm just showing you here the way that I decided to put this shelf together. Basically, I cut it um, down to the width that I needed to fit across the shelf, like going from back to front, and then I cut a two-inch flap on the front. I then taped it on and then hot glued for some extra security. We are going to be covering all of these shelves later, and I only made four because that's how many shelves I have in my pantry, especially since I got rid of that little tiny weird wonky shelf that I probably wasn't going to be able to cover anyway. So just make sure that you are measuring the size of your shelves if you're going to be using foam board because the foam board from Dollar Tree is 30 by 20. So if you need something a little bit longer, you might have to come up with a different plan. But if you're looking for something that is 30 or under going from side to side, the foam board worked really well for me. Instead of sanding spackle because it makes an absolute mess, I like to take a wet rag and wipe the extra um, spackle off of the areas where I don't want it and it leaves the holes all still filled. So that's just a tip for you guys when you are painting and you needed to spackle something. I also like using the pink kind that changes white so I know when it is dry. I'm then going to be starting the painting process which you are going to come to see was an absolute pain. Because I could not get the shelves out of here, I did not have hardly any room to work with. And this is very tall. I will say I debated just leaving the ceiling the way that it was. But yes, paint in my hair always. Every time I paint, I get paint in my hair. It never fails, probably because my hair is so big. <laughs> but I was worried about cutting in because I could not reach those back corners because the shelves were in my way. I wasn't going to be able to cut in at the top nicely. So I decided to head and just to go ahead and just paint the whole ceiling. There is access to the attic there. It is the second place in the house, um, actually the third, I think, that we have access to the attic. And I decided to just go ahead and just paint that whole thing so it was one seamless look and I didn't have to stress about cutting in and getting it on the ceiling anyway and having it look really terrible. I also was questioning the color as I was painting. This is Repose Gray. It's the same color that we did in our kitchen. But our kitchen is light, bright, and airy. So once I was kind of done and the paint was drying after I had done two coats, I was like, wow, this is really dark because, well, it's a dark pantry. So I thought maybe I should have used the lighter color basalt powder, but I do have a fix for that. That's going to be in an upcoming video after I do my, do my Timu haul, <laughs> wink, wink, because I actually got something from Timu that I think is going to be perfect in this pantry that I was going to use in my um, closet, but I think I'm going to use it in here instead because the color is very dark in this very kind of closed off space, but I like the fact that it matches the kitchen. What are you saying? Come on, let's hit it out. I'm about to lose my mind again. How did you stop living me? How it was very interesting trying to film in this small space because I could barely fit myself in this space with the shelves in. So I did my best to reach everything on the ceiling that I could. And you're going to see that. I give myself a little trick here in a bit um, that worked really well for me because this is such a tight space, but basically to get all of this covered <laughs> because I couldn't reach certain parts, I taped my paintbrush to a broom handle using painter's tape. <laughs> And that's what I'm going to be doing to get the rest of it. It looks crazy. It felt crazy when I was doing it, but it absolutely worked. I know it looks absolutely insane, but I got to tell you, this came in really handy for this tiny space. Now, it wouldn't work well to cut in corners or anything because, you know, it's kind of flimsy, but it worked well considering I was just covering the whole ceiling the same color as the pantry walls. Even possible. It 
was time to move on to painting the door, so I just had to take the door off of the hinges, take all of the hardware and everything off, and I'm going to be using the same paint I used in previous videos. It is a mildew-resistant semi-gloss. Originally, when we painted all of our trim in the house and our doors, we had used a flat, and I just noticed it was not working well. It works great on our walls. All of our walls are in flat paint. But for the trim, it wasn't working super great. So I am switching to a semi-gloss for all of our trim and our doors as well. Now the inside of this, I only kind of did like one and a half coats because um, it was really ratchet on the inside. Like no one had painted the inside of this when they did the trim, myself included, nor did the previous owners. Um, so it was looking really bad, but you're not really gonna see inside there too much. So I wasn't worried about the inside trim looking too perfect, but I did wanna make sure the outside trim and the doors looked really good. So I did two coats on all of the outside trim and two coats on each side of the door because you're definitely gonna see the inside of the door when you open the pantry. So I wanted to make sure both sides of the door got two good coats of the semi-gloss paint. Why you wanna let me go now? This was probably not the best way to paint this door because I had to come in later and touch up the bottom because I couldn't go all the way down. But it worked for me because I had stuff spread like absolutely like everywhere. My kids were home. Like I just had like a whole mess going on. So I figured I would just lean it right up here instead of taking an entire bit of floor space by laying it down like I had done with the previous doors. And I will have all those videos linked down below where I did those kind of little home projects. Um, and I will also have the paint and everything that I used linked down in the description box in case you are interested. Now it is time to cover our foam board shelf covers. This is the contact paper from Dollar Tree. I used this same one um, in our hall closet. With this one though, it was not quite wide enough to fit. So I did have to do several pieces and I decided to put the like juncture of those pieces in the back of the shelf so you wouldn't see it from the front. That way the front of the shelf was one smooth piece. Now this is tricky to work with. Because I had attached the shelf all together and I didn't do the front piece separate, it was kind of tricky to get the front nice and flat. And some of them are gonna look better than others, but it is a good temporary fix if you cannot afford to completely redo our shelves or your shelves. <laughs> what we would really love to do is get rid of the wire shelves all together and actually put wood shelving in here and change up kind of how the system works. But it's just not in the budget right now and this was very inexpensive. It was $1.25. I got seven of the foam boards, but I didn't end up using all of them. And then I did have to use one roll of contact paper for each shelf. So that's $1.25 times four just for the contact paper. But even so, it is probably a third of the cost that I would have spent doing a cheap wood shelf cover and way cheaper than if we would have decided to rip out all of the wire shelving and put in new shelving. So off camera, because this area was so small, I did decide to put in new brackets. I hated the way the other ones kind of stuck out and took up my shelf space, so I just got these from Menards. They were like two something a piece, and they are not attached to the shelf, but they are helping support the weight in the middle, just like the wire shelf brackets were doing. I then decided to take some hot glue and just kind of glue down the corners. Now, it's not gonna be super strong, but that's just gonna keep the shelf covers from kind of sliding around as I pull things in and out of the pantry. And you will notice you can still see the little bit on the sides and so much paint in my hair. You can still see a little bit on the sides. That's why I was saying I wish that the length of this was a little bit longer than 30, but I was working with what I could find and what I could afford. And that is a-okay. I was trying to wrap this up and get everything put back in the pantry. <laughs> it was getting pretty late, so I just kind of went through, got rid of any expired food, anything that I was not going to use. And like I said, I'm setting the pantry up pretty similar to the way that it was before because I liked the system and it worked for us. I just wanted more space without those bars in my way. And quite frankly, I just wanted it to look better.
it in your mind. Na na na, we ain't got the time. Yeah. I also really liked that without that supporting bar in my way, I could extend my spice rack that I use for our canned food out a lot further than I was able to before. So it worked much better for us. Now, I have been thinking as I'm done with this project, I would like to add one more shelf at the top. Not that weird corner situation that was there before. And I understand why they did that because you have to have access to the attic. But if anyone really ever needed access to the attic for an emergency or something, we could figure out how to get the shelf out, I'm pretty sure. But I do think it would be nice to have one more wire shelf with a cover just at the top for some extra storage. But I am undecided on that at the moment because I think I can make do with what I have. Let's remind ourselves what this pantry looked like when we started out. Those lovely wire shelves and those odd brackets that completely cut off the middle of our storage. Absolutely hated it. Even if our organizational system was great, the look, not so great. But now I am completely in love with the way this pantry turned out. And yes, it is a little bit dark as you are gonna see, but I do have a fix for that. But I think it looks so much more appealing, even if it's not perfect. Your projects do not have to be expensive and they don't have to be absolutely perfect for you to love your space. Do what you can with the time that you have and the budget that you are working with. I will have in the description box around about how much this cost me, not including the price of paint because, well, we already had it. So check the description box if you're wondering how much the supplies I had to purchase cost us. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining. Make sure you check out the video and the playlist on the screen. And as always, smash that subscribe button so you can become part of our YouTube family. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.